Okay, guys, uh, let's get started. Uh, please check your attendance on Blackboard. So, so I believe so this week is the campus festival period, right? Okay. But uh, during the campus festival period, the class will not be canceled. <laughs> I, I, I need to teach, okay? So this is my, this is my duty. So, so classes will not be canceled, okay? So, but you can enjoy the uh, festival, okay? <clears throat> uh, okay, so, so we learned about the so actually in, in the previous class uh, we learned about the uh, another very low syntaxes right so then we briefly uh, reviewed how to design uh, the sequential logic such as latch and flip flop right so just just to, just to memorize how to design flip flops actually so as I mentioned we frequently use flip flops in digital design so. You need to understand how to how to implement how to implement a uh, if flip flops using system variable. So, so this is the main main uh block or main logic so used in the uh, this the system design. Okay? So and then we frequently use uh, this asynchronous reset if flip flop. Okay, so. I also explained about the, the meaning of negative reset and the asynchronous reset, right? So if the a signal, the a signal changes changes with a clock signal, then we, we can call this signal is synchronous, right? But if the clock if the signal does not change with the clock clock chain, then we can call this signal is <coughs> asynchronous, right? So we frequently use a synchronous reset. So and then also we frequently use negative reset. It is because initially, the so initially the electric device, so electric device is in the, in the turn off state. Okay. So and then if the electric device is turned off, then signals, signals of this uh, device is similar to the low signal okay so and then and then i also explain we require actually the electric devices require reset state the initialized state for implementing a stable system right so, so and then also we need to define the, the state of in the, the like the some output or some state value in the Recess state, so initialized state. Okay, so this is the some uh, <clears throat> deeply flop with the reset, the asynchronous negative reset. Also, uh, we learned about the blocking and non-blocking assignment. And then, so I I mentioned that this is, this can be uh, a little bit tricky because this is. This non-blocking or blocking state blocking assignment is is a different from the some normal normal concept of programming languages, right? So, then, but you need to mention you need to uh, you need to note that so actually the system very logo is developed for designing real hardware, so. The, and then, so that's, that's why the system value includes the, the different types of assignment, blocking and non-blocking. So, but we can understand that the non-blocking, the non-blocking assignment is the parallel assignment or concurrent assignment, right? So if we use the, this non-blocking assignment, this line and this line, so the first line and the second line will be executed in parallel. So it's so a concurrent. It's, a, it's very important, right? So, but if we use the blocking assignment, so this first line and second line will be execute, executed sequentially. It's, it's very similar to the 
no more, no more program language concept. So in, in a normal language, no, in a in a normal uh, programming languages, the each statement, each statement will be executed sequentially. Okay. So we are very familiar with the, this concept. So if you if you uh, have experience in the program language, but so this concept is a little bit different because the non this is the non-blocking or it represents concurrent assignment. Okay. So but uh, <clears throat> you can just understand that we use we use non-blocking assignment for the for implementing the flip block, right? So it is because the so if you understand the behavior of the flip block, then I believe you can understand why why we need non-blocking statement in for the flip block out. So if you see the, this figure, so you can find that. So you can find the two output signals, Q0 and Q1. And then we learned that this Q0 and then Q1 will be updated on the rising edge of clock, right? So you can find the clock signal here. So you can understand that the, the output signals Q0 and Q1 will be updated concurrently. So in parallel, uh, concurrently on the rising edge of the clock at the same time, right? So you can, well, so I mentioned that the output will be changing concurrently. So if the signal changes concurrently, then we need to use the non-blocking statement, non-blocking assignment. But in a combination of logic, so the this node, see, so if you uh, see the these nodes n1, n2, n3, and the y, the final output y, then you can observe that the signals, the signals for this n1, n2, n3 need to be updated sequentially. So firstly, n1 needs to be updated and then N2 will be updated and then N3 will be updated. And finally, Y will be updated. So for the combination of logic, then these nodes, the from the, the, the left side nodes, like from N1 to N2, N3, and Y, these nodes, these nodes need to be updated sequentially, right? So that's why we need to use non-blocking statement for combinational logic. Okay. So this is the example, and then also this is the another so another example of the block and non-blocking statement. So some actually some students ask the question after the class then in the previous class. So. So I believe this this can be a little bit uh, uh, this can be a little bit confusing, right? It's a little bit tricky because actually, so so in this example we use the uh, the very similar very similar statement, but the left side code uses non-blocking assignment, and then the right side code uses uh, blocking blocking assignment. So, but we can just understand, or we can just understand the meaning of this code. So, based on the definition, so, so if you see the uh, this right side code, so it uses uses the blocking statement. So, if you see the blocking statement, then you can understand that oh, the output output will be updated immediately. Okay, so this is for the atomic but you can just understand that if we use the if we use the blocking state blocking assignment then output will be updated immediately and then this output will be given to the, the next line okay so n1 will be updated by d 
immediately. So this is called the atomically. Okay. So it's atomically represented the signal. The signals will be updated immediately. Okay. And then this N1 is given to the, the next line. Okay, because this is the, the definition of a blocking statement. And then so N1. Q will be updated by N1 also immediately. Okay. So if the so if you see the, this statement, so, so you can find that this is the always on the one effect uh, uh, statement. So this is kind of a deeply block. And then also you can find the sensitivity list, sensitivity list includes the positive edge of a clock, right? So on the on the rising edge of a clock, then this always statement will be executed right so executed and then if the e is the certain value like zero then this value will be updated to n1 immediately right so if it is zero and then so it's updated and then so so updated immediately then it is updated to the q so actually even though we use two lines of code inside of the deeply block, so it's like always on top of FF, then it is equivalent to Q equal E. Q is equal to D, right? Because N1 will be updated immediately, and then this value will be given to the next line also immediately, and then this value will be also updated immediately. So it's equivalent. So if you if the if we just uh, synthesize uh, this code using the synthesis tool, then this code will generate the only one deeply block. Okay. So this is the meaning of non-blocking statement. So actually, so it's not a problem. So we can we can use we can use non-blocking state uh, blocking statement inside of already on the one FF. But this coding style is not recommended. It is because if we use if we write a code like this, then we expect the this hardware usually the usually. So I, I mentioned that this code, this right side code is not error. It's okay. So it's not a bug. Okay, it's okay. But actually, if we write the code like this, like the right side code, then usually, so I, I mentioned usually, usually we expect the, this hardware. Okay. So and then some students ask that, oh, what is the mean? Why, why two deep flips are generated by this left side code? So this is a very good question. So if you see that this code, then on the rising edge of a clock, then this always on the by factor will be executed. So firstly, the N1, N1 will be updated by D and Q will be updated by N1, okay, right? But this update will be reflected concurrently on the rising edge of clock, okay? Concurrent, concurrently on the rising edge of clock. So if we see the, all these figures and you, you know, this is the, this will generate the deep flip-flop, right? Also, this can be, gen this can generate the deep flip-flop, okay? But the generated deep flip-flops will be connected back to back, serially, okay? Like this, one. It is because, so 
very logo knows that so it's a it's a, it's a definition by the definition the very logo knows that so this n1 and q will be updated on the rising edge of clock right but even though we do not we do not we do not uh, define any delay for this uh, non-blocking assignment but system value just includes the very short delay this delay is called the delta delay because so in mathematics we use delta for representing very short time right so actually on the rising edge of cloud this these statement, these assignment will be performed in parallel. And then system very logo just mark that the N1 will be updated by D after delta delay. So it's a very short delay. So not the, the zero delay, but actually we can just uh, define the sequence. Sequence between between clock update and on rising edge of clock and update of the signal. So if we just consider the delta delay, it looks like this. In the on the rising edge of clock, okay, and then after very short delay at the delta, then n1 and n1 will be updated by d. Okay. So I mentioned that this data delay is very short. So it's like, it's like the zero delay, but system will very low, just define the sequence between, the time sequence between edge of clock, the rising edge of clock and signal update. So we can understand. So by this assignment, N1 will be updated by this value of D. So the value of D is sampled at the, on the rising edge of clock. It's a sampled on the rising edge of clock. But the update is in delta T. It's that very short time. Update can be performed in very short time. Delta delay. Okay. So on the rising edge of clock, then the deeply block sample the this value of D also at the same time, so because it's a concurrent, at the same time, deeply block also samples value of N1. Okay, and then this value will be reflected to N1 and then also true. So I mentioned that. On the rising edge of clock, the deep flip block samples value D also at the same time, the deep flip block samples the N1. Okay, so D is here, D will be sampled by clock. Okay, and then it is N1. Also, N1 is sampled by clock and then this is the Q. Okay? But the update, update is the in, in very short time. So it's a delta delay. So actually this update value will be given to the N1 because after the rising edge of the clock, the clock is a pure delta signal. You know? So at this time the N1 will be updated as is the D for this clock and then Q will be updated by N1 but this N1 is the, the N1 value at this time. Okay? But for this clock this N1 is the actually the N1 at this time because of a very short delay. Okay? So actually, so, so there are two deep blocks here 
And then these two deep flip flops work synchronously with clock signal. So like this, okay? So on the first rising edge of clock, the D is updated to the, this N1, okay? So this, this N1 value is the, the previous value on the rising edge of the first, first rising edge of clock, okay? So this N1 is the, actually for the, this cube, N1 is the, some old value. It's a, actually, it's a sample at the same time. Okay. So this always statement will generate the two deep flip flop because we just define the, the two behavior of two different flip flop. Okay. So this n one. Okay. Um, this n one value. Okay. So you can find the two n one here. This n one value and then this n one value is different. Okay. Right. So this is the kind of. This is the n one at rising edge, and this n one is the and one after delta t time after delta t time after rising edge. Okay. okay. So actually, uh, this already a statement will generate the back to back deep flip flop like this. Actually, we pre we also frequently use the this back to back uh, deep flip flop. So because we can generate the delayed signal. So if we see the uh, some waveform, then it, the waveform looks like this. So N1, so this is the clock frequency, a uh, clock, clock signal. And then the N1 will be changed here. Okay, like this, and then actually, uh, uh, like zero, one, okay, and then the, the, this is N1, this is Q, then Q also updated by this value and this value. Okay, so if we just see, observe the behavior of N1 and Q, then we can find that the Q value, so Q value is delayed by one clock from N1, so, right? Because the, this zero is updated to Q on, at this time, right? At this time, so this one is updated to Q at this time. So one clock is delayed. So if we, if we want to generate the so delayed signal, then we can use the this block, the back-to-back deep flip flop, and then you can implement the back-to-back deep flip flop using non-blocking statement inside of or already on top of FX. Okay, so you need to you need to distinguish the different meaning of non-blocking and blocking. So, you know, actually, this is a little bit tricky. And then this is the unique characteristics of a uh, system value. So it means, it means that so you can so the non-blocking or blocking statement can be uh, asked during the final exam. Okay. So this is another example so the, for the combinational logic. So you can find the so I mentioned that for the combination analysis, so we you we can we use blocking statement because in the combination logic, these nodes like n1, n2, n3, and y, so these nodes will be updated sequentially. So that's why we use blocking statement for the combination analysis. So this is the correct design. So we already know that. If we see that this combination analysis, N1 will be updated first, 
Okay, so n1 is reverse octet first, and then using the octet value n1, so n1, the octet value will be delivered to the next line, and then n2 will be octet two. And then n2 is also delivered to the next line, then n3 will be octet two, and then finally y will be octet two. So if we just check the, the update time, so actually the update sequence sequence, then we already know that the firstly n1 will be updated and then next n2 and then n3 and y. So it's okay. But if you see the this code, so you can find oh n2 will be updated first by n1. And then n one is here, so the order the order is changing, right? So if you see this combinational uh always of the com statement, then n two will be updated first, and then n one is updated, and then n three will be updated. Okay. So what's the problem? N2. N2 will be updated by N1, right? N1. But in this line, so N1 is the old value. Because we in, in this combination of it, n1 is the not b, n1 is equal to not b, right? So, but if we just firstly check the, this line, and I mentioned that the blocking assignment will be executed sequentially, like the code, the normal uh, programming code. So, this n1 includes the old value, it's not updated value, okay? So n2 is updated by n1, but this n1 is the old value. And then n1 is updated by not p. So n1 is, will be updated at this time. And, and then n2, n2 is here. So because the n2 is updated by old n1 value, so actually this statement is different from the this hardware, right? Because so in, in the hardware, N1 firstly updated, then N2, N3, Y, sequentially. But this is the incorrect code because N2 is firstly updated, okay? So what's the problem? The problem is that we may intend to generate the, this code and then Synthesis, synthesis two, synthesis two may generate the this code because the synthesis two just analyze the connections between signals. Okay, so if, we, if the synthesis two uh, uh, analyze the this code or n one is generated by a and gate n one and two n two is the output of a and gate and n one n one is the not gate at the B, so it's the so B signal is inverted using not gate. So then this to just generate the, the connection information, and then based on the, this connection information, then how do you will be the, the basic logic? Basic logic how do you will be generated? But if we simulate the, this code, then the simulation result. Simulation result can be different from the generated hardware because the simulation two just updates the value based on the system value definitions. And then this is the, in this code, we use the blocking statement. So actually these codes are executed sequentially. What's the problem? Simulation result does not match with the synthesis result. So generated the hardware. So that can that can cause very critical work. Okay? Because our intention, our intention is this hardware. 
Okay, because the synthesis is still general and that is harder, but actually the simulation result can be different from the real generated hardware. Okay. Then if the simulation is different from the hardware generated, hardware synthesis synthesized hardware, <laughs> we may this is the very critical one. Okay. So if we use the blocking statement, then we need to write the code also considering the generated hardware, which is very, very important in system value design. Okay? So it, this is because, so actually, the, as I mentioned, the system value is used for generating real hardware. So this is very important. So this system value is not it's a, it's a program language, but the, the purpose, the goal is different. The goal of normal program language is to generate the software code, right? But the goal, the goal of this system value code is to generate the real hardware. It's a hardware, okay? So we need to consider the generated hardware when we write the code in system value, okay? So this is the incorrect code. So this is the another example. So, so you can find the uh, always on the FF, so you can find the blocking statement here. Then, which last, the which, how hard do you, how, 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 so we can figure out how the hardware is generated based on the, this code. So, so I mentioned, so in this, in this code, so if you see that the left side code, so, so actually I also make the, <laughs> include the, this command. This is possible, but not recommended. So why? So let's analyze the, this code. So, oh, this is the always on the FF and then on the right edge of the clock, and this always on the FF will be executed. So we already know that, oh, this will generate the deep flip flop as a clock. And then the output will be generated, but it will be deep flip flop, deep flip flop. So if you see the, this code, the first line, then M1 is the D and A. And then this is the blocking statement. So what does that mean? D and A will be executed immediately. Then this value, this executed value will be updated to M1 also immediately. So this N1 has the is updated value, right? Understand? So what does it mean? D and A generate the N1, okay? So D and A, okay, this is A. So, and then if you see the second line, the N1 is updated to Q, using the blocking state, a uh, non-blocking state, non-blocking assignment. So this is actually, so this is a Q, and then this becomes the input of people because this always statement will be executed on the rising edge of the clock. So this is the generated hardware based on the, this code, right? So this one. So this is okay, we can, we can write the code, but it's not recommended. Why? If we write the code like this, not block a statement, so what is the generated hardware? The generated hardware is, hardware is so D and A, oops. B, so A, and 
And then, so oh, this is the now blocking. So actually, it's clock. It's clock. And then this is the N1. Okay. And also, N1 is connected to Q. Same clock is connected. It's a deep, another deep blue clock. And then, and on is connected to the key, and then this is the Q. Right, it is similar to the, the previous example. So if we intend, if we intend the non-block statement for the first line, then actually the default hardware will be generated. But we are humans, so <laughs> we can make mistakes. So sometimes we can intend the this code, but we may, right, like, so like the non-blocking, so we, we, we may intend the non-blocking code, but sometimes we can, we can uh, write the code like this. But it will generate the different hardware. So that's the problem. So this is possible. So if you intend the, the, the previous hardware, then it's okay. Then you, this, so if, if you just intend the, this hardware, the D, a and the end the gate, and then oh, this is the deep blue block, and then this is Q. So if you just intend to generate the, this hardware, then, then it's okay, but it's not recommended because inside of the flip flop, the non blocking and then blocking assignments are mixed. So sometimes it may cause very critical work because. The generated hardware can be different from our intentions. So this is the recommended code. So what can you observe? Inside of the already on the wireframe, there is only one non-blocking assignment. Then this assign this non-blocking assignment will generate the deep block. Like N1. So N1 is here and then. This is Q and then this is clock. So it's a very simple, right? If only one, one line. And then if we see the N1, N1 is defined using continuous assignment. Okay. So N1 is actually D A and then N1. Okay. So because the, this N1 is the same to this N1, so it's really it's connected. Okay. So Combinational logic, combinational logic is defined outside of always on the bar FF. Okay? Because actually it's very long. If we use the always on the bar FF, then we we uh we mentioned that the we we can we will generate the flip flop, but because of a non -blo uh, blocking statement. This, this statement will generate the combination logic inside of the array of the backpack, but this is not recommended. So we can define the combination logic outside of the array of the backpack. So we can avoid the bug, bugs in the hardware design. Okay? So this is the some rules. The rules for signal assignment. So because of non-blocking or blocking assignment in system error, sometimes it's, it can it can generate a bug. But so in order to avoid a bugs then bug generation, you need to uh, keep the, some rules, the signal assignment rule. So this is uh, some recommendation because as I mentioned in the previous example, this can be possible, but it's not recommended. Okay. But so you, it's a, this is a, so some rules. So, so the rules for signal assignment. Okay. So for the simple combination analysis, so it is recommended to use a sign. So this is the example. So this is very simple combination analysis. So only one end gate. So one end gate is here. So in this case, we can use the Continuous assign. 
assignment. So it's assign, we can use the assign statement. The combination analysis is generated by this simple assign statement. Okay? Simple combination analysis can be generated by assign. And then if we want to generate complicated combination analysis, so sometimes we can uh, want sometimes sometimes we, we need to uh, generate the complex combination analysis. Then we can use the always under the com. So it's a combination analysis and blocking assignment. Blocking assignment only. Okay, inside of arrays on the back com. So in order to generate the if if we want to generate the combination analysis, then we need to use the blocking assignment. Okay. So because of signal flows, because this is the incorrect code, right? So we need to generate the some some internal nodes based on the signal sequences. Okay, like N1 first, N2, N3. So if you see the, the sequence of the code, then you can find N1 in first digit five, and then N2, N3, five. So it is just, it is the, the, this code sequence matched with the, is matched with the, the signal sequences, okay? Be cautious of signal flows. Assign a signal in only one or a statement or assign statement. Okay. And then, okay. So, actually, if we want to generate the flip flop, then we can use the always on the FF and non blocking assignment. Okay. Like this. So this is the rule to avoid the, some bugs in the system value. So because of this non-blocking uh, uh, blocking statement, the system value can be a little bit tricky for understanding. And then also we may generate a very critical bug. So let's just remember the, this rules for signal assignment. Okay, so so we learned about the, um, the non-blocking or blocking statement, blocking assignment, because now so we we learned about we, because we, we are learning about the sequential logic and in, that includes the deep flip flop. So and then you know you need to know that in order to generate the deep flip flop, then you need to use the non-blocking assignment. So then let's learn how to code finite state machines using system value. Okay. So this is the example. So, so we learned that there are two types of FSMs, like more FSM and then mill FSM. And then this is the so, and then in order to uh, design FSMs. Then FSM includes the three blocks like the next state logic, so next state logic, so NSL, and then the state register, state register is here, and then up logic, up logic here. Okay, so we in order to design uh, FSM, then we need to define behavior of these three blocks. Next state logic, this is the combination logic, right? And then state register, state register is just the different flops, right? The three, the, the group of different flops and upper logic. Upper logic is also combination analysis. So like the FSM design, you can also define, you can also define the behavior of these three flops for designing FSM in system variable. Okay, let's just remember this. So in order to design FSM, so we need to define NSL, 
So combination logic, next state logic, and then people plus state register and out logic. So this is the example. So I will use the, this example, <laughs> smiling snail. So we learned about the, this smiling snail example, like the, the, the from the input sequence, input streams like 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Then we just detect the, this sequence, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. This is the smiling snail example. So we can just, we can um, design the, this smiling snail using MILFSM and MUFSM, right? The first leap, this is the MUFSM, and then this is the MILFSM. Okay, so this is the state transition diagram for the smiling snail. Then, how can we design MUFSM? So, if you see the right side, then you can find the state transition diagram and next state logic, state register, and then output logic. We can we can generate the code based on the these three blocks. So if you see that this code more person so snail on the home this is the module name this is the module name and then these are input and output so because the this more person includes deeply plus, so we require clock port, clock signal, and reset signal, okay? So you can find the, the reset signal, you can find the underbar N, so it represents the negative, negative reset, okay? So if we, so it, 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 this is also another, another rule. So we, we actually we can name, so signal, we can just uh, use any signal names Right, using the alphabet, alphabet letters. But if we we can just use the, some special post fix to represent the, some behavior of a signal. So this is just the rule, the recommend recommended rule. Okay, okay. This is not so. If we can, we can just define the reset signal like reset. So come on, let's reset. But if we just uh, see that this name, then we can find, oh, if the reset is one, then this is, this, this reset signal will generate the reset state. So in order to avoid the, this confusion, then we can add the post peaks like this, on the one end, on the one end represent, oh, this reset signal is the negative reset, it's negative. Sometimes you can add the, we can define the message signal on the bar B. B also represents the negative. Okay. This is another so we speak easy because it was a common for the, the software software design. So actually, so this naming rule is can be very critical because if we write a code and then actually the we can just also, software design, software development is the same. Actually, so one application can be developed by many people, many engineers, right? So, in order to avoid critical work, then we need to also define naming rule before starting development. Okay, so it, this is very critical for the software design also. Because the, nowadays, the one application can need to be generated, uh, developed by many people, like thousand people, like hundred, hundred to thousand people. Hardware design is the same. The hardware, the, the modern hardware is very very complex. So a single hardware, like for example, in the CPU, in the CPU is very very complex, and then in order to develop this one in a CPU around the thousand or even ten thousand people engineers need to be required. It's designed by many different people. So in order to avoid some communication errors or some bugs, we need to define naming room. This is also critical. On the one hand represent the negative. Okay? 
And then this is the input, so no, and then this is the output, so snake. So, so you can find the some type definition in the system below. So it's a it's a state type. So this is the state S0, S1, and S2. But this in this type dependent definition, this is the zero, this is one, this is two. Okay, because we use the type in a logic. Okay, then this is the two bit signal. Okay. So this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay. So, and then we define state on the current, state on the next. So what does it mean? This is the current state. This is, this is the next state. Right. So, in FSM design, we firstly define state register, and then state register will be is state registers are defined like this, right? This is the multiple different block, so clock, and then what is the export? What is the input port of the state register? Watch out. The input port of state to register is the next state. And then the output of this state to register is current state. That's what we learned in the previous class. Right? So if we see this, then we can find that this is state, but this is current state. This is the next state. Okay. So this is the state register. So if you see the state register, state register is just deep flip flops, right? Then we can implement the deep flip flops using always a double effect. Okay, or you can you can you can find the state register here, right? And then this is the deep flip flop with a synchronous reset. So you can, because you can find the reset here. So always on the by at positive edge of clock, the right energy, or negative negative edge of reset, and because this is the negative reset. So that's why we use the negative and begin. So firstly, we need to define the, this reset state. So if the reset is a zero, okay, then current state, current state becomes the S0. So it represents the, this one. For the reset, then it becomes the S0. Otherwise, the, for the normal state, then this is the if flip flop. So, current state is updated by next state. So, it generates the, this state register. Right? Do you understand? So, firstly, we, we generate the state register of more FSM. Then we require to generate the next state logic and then our logic. So, this here. Okay. so how can we generate the next state logic? So you can so we can define the next state using the state transition diagram. So here. So if we just see the this state di transition diagram. You can just know the next state logic by input. So this state state, state transition diagram represents if current state is S0, then if 
So input like the norm input is zero. Then next state is the what is the, what is the next state? Next state is s one. And then s so because s is one s next state is s zero. So if we if we see if we see the the state transition diagram, then we can just know the, the next state based on the current state and input signals. So we can find the next state logic like this. So if we use case statement, then we can simply generate the next state logic. So if you see that this next state logic, so then so this is the combinatorial logic, like right? And the same next state logic is the combinatorial logic. So we use always on the bar com, right? It's the combinational, and then we use the this statement. And then we in the the bell, the argument in the for the this this statement is the state on the bar com. So it means. If the current state is S0, then we define the next state using the input signal. If the norm is 1, then it's a S0, right? So this one. And then if norm is 0, then it's a next state is the S1. So this first line of case statement define the the this current state and then state transition for this from this current state. So we can also define the the state transition for the S1 and S2 so based on the this state transition diagram. Okay, and then it's important. This is the combination analysis. And then if we use the case statement, they need to define all possible cases. If not, then that should be generated its bulk. So we need to define default case. And then so we can define any next last like the state next is the S0. So this is the Next state logic. The next state logic can be defined using case statement based on the more FSM. Right? Then output logic. Output logic is also the combination logic. Then we can define the, the output, the snail. Snail is the output. So output signal based on the current state because if this is the more FSM, right? So output is just determined by current state. This is more FSM. So based on the current state, state of current is S2. So state current is S2, then output is 1 because output is just 1 if the current state is S2. So we define next state logic, and then output logic. And then, as I mentioned, the next state logic is combination logic, and then output logic is also combination logic. So we can Use the always on the com or assign statement. Okay. And Millie. So this is another example. So the Millie FSM, this is the state transition diagram of Millie FSM. And then this is the, the, the logic, the, the Millie FSM logic that includes up. The next state logic, state register, and up logic. So we can also define the, 
So state high, and then in the millionth the same, the, in this example, the, 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 there are only two cases, S0 and S, S, S1. So actually this is the one bit signal. So it's a state high, a state we define the, we declare the state on the curve, and then state on the bar next. So it is because the state register is just a oh, bit flip flop, and then the next state is the input of the flip flop, then current state is the out of the flip flop. Okay. So like the more FSM, you can also generate the state register using always on the bar FS. Positive is clear and negative energy is at the bar end. So there is the reset state. So we define the reset state. So if reset is zero, Okay, because it's a negative energy. So state current is S0. Otherwise, it's the same. So if you see the state register, then actually the, the mm, generation of state register is it's very similar. Okay, because we can just generate the deep flip flops. Okay, and then we can just define the reset state. Okay, and then actually. So in the normal state, then state current is updated by next state on the rising edge of clock. So if you just see the this one and this one, then you can find that actually the state register is the similar. Okay. And then the next state logic and the up logic, so we can generate the the next state logic based on the state transition diagram. Okay, we can also use the case statement. Okay. In the case statement, the argument is the state of the current. So based on the current, we can define the uh, next state based on the input and current state. Okay. If the current state is S0, then input is 0, then it goes to S1, so it's here. Right? If the current state is S0 and then the input is 1, then it goes to S0, so this is S0. We can also define the S1. So if the current state is S1, then we can also define next state. And then you can also find that, so in this case statement, there is no default statement. So why? State on the current is the one bit signal. So there are all two cases. So we can redefine all possible cases. So in this case, we don't need to define default in the case statement. Okay. And then up logic. So up logic is also determined by current state and input. Because this is milli FSM. So in the milli FSM, the logic is determined by current state and input. So in the up logic, we also use the collision marker because we can use the case statement. Because as I mentioned, the output, output of milli FSM is determined by current state and input. So if the current state is at zero and then if it's the input is zero, then output is also. Input is zero, then output is zero. And then if the current state is zero and then input is one, the output is also zero. So actually, if the current state is at zero, then output is always zero in this million. Of course, the zero is zero. So it's one B zero. And then if the cross state is S1 and based on the input, then it can be S1 or zero. So we define up logic. So in that case of design, actually, if you if if we can uh, define the 
the state transition diagram, then based on the state transition diagram, then we can generate the, the state register and next state logic and up logic. Okay. But you know, the state register is just deeply blunt. So actually this is similar, right? But so we can define the next state logic and the up logic based on the state transition diagram. And then in the so actually if we use the case statement, then we can easily we can easily implement the the next state logic and up logic. Understand? So this is a summary of the FSM design. So there are three blocks, state register, and the next state logic, and the up logic. The state register is just a deep block with the reset. Okay. So we can just define reset state using the state register, and then otherwise in the normal case, then the current state is updated by next state. The next state logic, the next state is the function of current state and input. Okay. So, and then, you know, the next state logic is the combination analysis. Then we can implement the next state logic using always on the com and paste statement. Up logic can be also implemented using paste statement. Like the melee example, the more the up is the just the function of a current state, the melee up is the function of a current state and input. So this is a combination of this. So in FSM design, we can we can combine sequential logic, deeply block, and then also we can use we can implement the Combination logic. So actually, actually this FSM, if we use, if we use the FSM design, then our design includes the combination logic part and sequential logic part. And this is the common digital design. Okay. Common digital design includes the sequential logic part, like deep plot, and combinational logic part. Okay, so I will just show, uh, show the, how the, some some uh, some miscellaneous technique, okay, some techniques for the system value. The, so I will explain about the parameterized module. So parameterized module means is that we can just define parameter, parameters of uh, this system value module. So this is the example. So this you can find that this is the MOX2. And then actually, if we just design the multiplexer, the box, box then box can have different width of input. So for example, two to a box, so it's a box two, the two to a box can receive the one bit input, or two to a box can receive two bit, three bit, four bit, or eight bit inputs. Okay. Actually, we do not define parameters in the in this box design. Then we need to define the behavior of one bit box, two bit box, four bit box, eight bit box separately. Okay, so this is cumbersome. So we can define the parameter, and then in this example, we can define the parameter. So the parameterized input start with the this is shop sign. Okay. So after the module name, so we can find the module name here and then start to read the shop sign. And then inside of the, this bracket, then parameter is defined. So in this example, we define the parameter name with, and then we define the default parameter value. The default parameter value is A. So if and then if you see the, the port list, so input logic, 
then you can find that instead of the constant number, we use we, the parameter name. So this is, so if we, so this is the with. So then if we can order the third is parameter, then we can define the multiplexer with the different input width. Okay. And then, you know, this is the same. So this is the behavior of a multiplexer. So, so we can instance, we can instance the this multiplexer in the some in the system area module. Now if we if we do not define the this final value, then default value is used. Okay. So this is the example. The box is instantiated. Then the, actually we do not define any parameter value. In this case, the default parameter value is used. Okay, so this is the AP box. But we can define the different parameters such as this. Well, so it means that we just override the this parameter value using well. Okay, it's so overloaded. So then we can generate the 12 bit multiplexer. Okay. So if we use the this parameter parameterized module, then we can easily, then we can just define one module using, okay? So we can reduce the number of modules actually. The module instantiation. Uh, okay. So if you see the test bench code, then you can find that the, your design, your design is included inside of test bench. So like this. So it means that in, inside of the test bench module, your design module is instantiated. So it, your module is used as the instance of this test bench module. So we can, so we can, Design the hardware like this. So there is the TAM module, so it is a large module. This TAM module includes the multiple sub modules, right? So this is the hierarchy of design, right? In, on, on the, inside of the TAM module, there are multiple sub modules, mm -hmm. unit A, unit B, and unit C. So system variable can be designed like this, right? right? So inside, so there, there can be a module, very large module, and then inside of this module, many modules, many sub modules can be included. Okay, so this is called the instantiation. Okay, so I think we don't have enough time. So in the next class, so we also learn about the instantiation of the this inst instantiation in system level. Okay, any questions? Okay. So thank you for your attention. See you in the next lesson.